In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to write a program that uses functions with default parameters and function overloading. I began my program by including the libraries for IOStream, String, and IOManip. And I'm going to put my functions for default parameters under this comment and my functions for overloading under the other. And then I just began main with a simple return statement. I'm going to create a function that prints information about an animal. And one of the parameters will be the number of legs for the animal. I'm going to make that leg count default to four because a lot of animals do have four legs. And when we call the function, if we have an animal with more than four legs, then we can provide the number of legs. Otherwise, we'll let the function use the default. So this function is not going to return anything. I'll say the return type is void. And I'm going to call this function print animal. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to pass a string for its name. And the second parameter will be in the number of legs, which is an integer. And I'm going to default that to four. Now, because legs had a default value, it had to be the second parameter, because once you assign a default to a parameter, all following parameters must have a default. Now, once we're in the body of this function, the function will not know whether the default was used or not. That was just a matter of assigning a value to a variable. And I'm going to just put a little um, statement out on the screen about the animal. All right, so I'm going to show the name of the animal and the number of legs. And then in main, I'm going to call this function two ways. One, with an animal that has four legs and uses the default. And then also with another animal that has a different number of legs. So this section of the program is about using functions with default parameters. So I'm going to begin by printing information about a tiger. The tigers have four legs, so I don't need to provide the number of legs. I'll let that parameter default. I also could print another animal, like say a snake. And snakes don't have legs, so I'm going to need to provide the number of legs as zero. So we have one function with one function body, but it can be called two different ways. So let's test this program, see what happens. All right, and when the program ran, it shows us that a tiger has four legs and a snake has zero legs. That's exactly what we were expecting to see. I'm also going to build the function that I talked about in the video where I discussed how to create functions with default parameters. And that's a function that calculates sales tax. The function I created was called calculate tax. It's going to take a price and based on the correct sales tax rate, calculate the tax that would be due if you purchase that item. This function is going to return a value. It's going to return a double. And it'll have two parameters, the price of the item and the tax rate. Both of these are going to be doubles. When we work with money, we usually work with doubles. And a percentage will have to be a double. So I'll begin with price. And then my second double will be called rate. I'm going to default that to eight and a quarter percent. And some people prefer to put a zero there. It doesn't really matter. The compiler won't care. All right. 
So this function is going to take the price, multiply it by the rate, and return the product. And most of the time, when an item is purchased in this area, the sales tax rate is eight and a quarter percent. So usually we can just use that default and not have to provide anything at all. I'll go ahead and build the function body, which is just gonna be return price times rate. Now I'm gonna build out my program a little bit more on this one, just to review some concepts. After my tiger and snake, I'm gonna ask the user for the amount of the item that's being purchased, and then I'm gonna ask the user if it's a car. And that way I can have the program flow be dependent on what the user enters. So I'll build the code after the code where we printed the animals, but I wanna define a couple of variables first and I'll put all my variables up at the top of my main function. That way when I'm looking for them, I know where to find them. I'm gonna need a double for the price that the user enters. Go ahead and default that to zero. And I'm also going to need a double for the amount of tax that's returned by that function. And then finally, because I'm going to ask the user whether or not the item is a car, I'm gonna have a char variable to store that answer. And I'll default that to n. And then because I'm working with money, I'll go ahead and change my output so that I'm printing all decimal numbers in fixed notation with two decimal places. All right, so I think we're now ready to focus on calling this function. I'll scroll this up here. So I'm gonna begin by prompting the user for the price. And I'll follow that up with a CN statement where I get the price from the user. And price isn't all I need. I also need to find out if this is a standard item or if we're purchasing a car which has a different tax rate. So I'm going to also put a message up here that says, is this a car? And I just want to Y or N as my answer. All right, and then I will get that value of whether or not the item is a car. <clears throat> and based on that, I'm going to call my function one of two ways. So if it is a car, and remember when we're testing for equivalence, we need to use the double equal sign. If car equal equal capital Y, then I'm going to call my calculate tax function by providing a value for the sales tax rate. So I'll use the price that the user entered and then I'm going to enter 0 0.0625. Otherwise, my tax is going to be equivalent to calling that function. And I'm not going to provide a tax rate because with a standard item, I'll just let it use the default tax rate of eight and a quarter percent. And then finally, after I get my result from my function call and I have a value in the tax variable, I'm going to echo this information back on my console window. Or maybe I'll say the tax, show the tax first. I'll say tax. Let's do that. That's a little better so I can see for sure what I got when I ran the program. And, and then I'll say total. And I'll add the tax to the price. I think that'll work well. 
All right, let's go ahead and test this program. And what we've done is we've asked the user for a price, whether or not the item is a car. And based on that answer, I'm either going to call calculate tax with a value for the tax rate, or I'm going to let it use its default. All right, so let's say $10,000. Is it a car? Yes. And what I'm seeing now is that the tax would be $625. That sounds about right on $10,000, giving me a total of $10,625. That looks good. Uh, but we need to test more than one condition here. So I'll execute this program again. I'll buy a $500 item that is not a car. And this time the sales tax is $41.25, giving me a total of $541.25. And that looks pretty good too. So now we've created two different functions that each use a default parameter. And with each of these two functions, we called it one time where we provided all of the parameters. And then we also called it where we omitted the parameter that had a default value. And then we created a little program that asked the user for a price and the type of item so we could determine which of the two functions, or rather, which way to call the function, whether or not to use the default value or to overwrite the default value. So with our default parameters, we have one single function that we're calling different ways. Now we want to look at function overloading. This time we're gonna have multiple functions, but they're all gonna have the same name. So depending on how we call a function with that name, the compiler will choose one of the overloaded functions to execute. Let's continue with our theme of animals and I'm gonna create a function that displays an animal in the sound that it makes. So I'll start with the first one, the basic one. It's not gonna return anything, it's just gonna display things. So I'm gonna say void animal sound, and I'm going to provide a name for the animal, as well as the sound that the animal makes. And then I'll echo that on the screen. And something like that. And so we're going to use this whenever we have an animal that does make sounds. Let's go ahead and call this function and test it. So I'm gonna come down here in main after all my sales tax code. And I'm going to call animal sound for a dog. And my dog is gonna say wolf. Let's test that. Make sure that this version of the function is working before I create more versions. All right, we're still asking about the car. No, all right. And now I can see that my program is calling the animal sounds function because the screen says, the dog says wolf. And that looks great. And I could call it with other animals if I wanted. And for all you cat lovers out there, we'll add a cat and it would do the same thing, except it would display cat and meow. But not all animals make a sound that we hear. And so I wanna have another version of this function for those types of animals. I'm gonna come up here where my animal sound function is, and I'm gonna create a second animal sound function. And I can create a second function as long as something in the parameter list is different. I'm still gonna pass it a name for the string, or a string of the animal's name, but because this animal doesn't make sounds, 
we're not going to pass in a sound, and we're only going to use one parameter. So I'll also display a message on here, but I'm going to change my message a little bit. Something like this. So because I don't have a sound, I'm going to indicate that this animal doesn't make a sound. And so now when I call the function animal sound, the compiler will choose one of these two functions to execute. And it's going to base that decision on the number of parameters. So I'm going to come down here and add an animal sound for a snail. And I can even mix these up. I could interleave this with another animal sound for a fish or something like that. So what I want to see is when this program executes, then we'll see the sound for the dog and the cat, but the fish and the snail won't have a sound. All right, and then like looking at the, looking at the output, I can see that the fish doesn't speak, the snail doesn't speak, but we have woof and meow for the dog and the cat. So really, all function overloading is allowing us to create one function that can be called, or sorry, multiple functions with the same name, and they're similar functions, which is why they have the same name, but we want them to each do something a little bit differently. We had one, so the output on these two functions is different. One displays the sound and the other does not. Now, one thing that I do want to watch out for is I have some functions with default parameters and I have some functions with overloading, but those are completely separate functions. But if you try to combine both of these techniques in your functions, you may get some functions that are defined where your compiler just can't figure out which function to call and your code won't compile. So let's try coming up here to animal sound where it says string sound. And I'm going to try to make this a default parameter. So I have two different ways I can call animal sound. I can call animal sound with these two parameters or this first animal sound I could call with a single parameter. But that's kind of like calling this other animal sound which also has a single parameter. Now let's see what happens when we try to compile this. And we're going to get um, errors on this. And I'm trying to see if this is a link error or... All right, and so the message that I'm getting is that it's an ambiguous call to overloaded function. So it's not even getting to the linker. Ambiguous call to overloaded function means it cannot figure out which function to call because I have two different ways to call a function or I have two different functions I could call with a single parameter. So in this case, we cannot use a default value for the parameter because that's going to interfere with the compiler knowing which function to call. So default parameters, we had one function we called multiple ways. With function overloading, we had multiple functions with the same name, but different parameter lists and different function bodies. And those are some advanced techniques you can use with your functions in C++.